Can you think of one other person that was the least in his clan that God called to lead, lead Israel? David. Yeah, this is not the only time this happens. This is a pattern. This is a God pattern. And I think this is important for us to take note of because oftentimes we feel weak. Oftentimes we feel worthless. Oftentimes we feel like, what is it that we really have to offer? I'm not great. I'm not as great as this person. I'm not, a, I'm not as strong as this person. I'm not as influential as this person. Lord, how can I, what, what is it that I can really offer? And here's what the Lord's response is to Gideon, and I really think that he's saying this to us today. Verse 16, the Lord answered, I will be with you. That's all we need. Do you understand that that is all you need? He promises us he will be with us. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he tells Gideon this right now. I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites together. So here's Gideon's response. If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Hey, you know, this is okay that Gideon is trying to make sure that this is, this is the God of all the universe. Because understand that, I mean, you get the picture of, uh, they, they, could, they couldn't even count the animals that were ravaging the land, much less the warriors that were in the land. And God is saying to Gideon, the weakest person in his clan, by the way, the weakest person in his family and the weakest clan, I want you to take Israel, lead Israel, and wipe out this massive amount of people. Um, can I just make sure that this is actually you talking to me? I need a sign. Verse 18, please don't go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. So Gideon went in, prepared a young goat from an ephah of flour. He made bread without yeast. Putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to Jesus under the oak. Jesus said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so with the tip of the staff that was in his hand. The Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the Lord, he exclaimed, Sovereign Lord, I have seen you, I have seen you face to face. The Lord said to him, Peace. Isn't that just like Jesus to say that? Peace. Don't be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Abyssalites. So that same night, the Lord said to him, Take the second bull from your father's herd, the one that's seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal, the god of the weather, and cut down the Asherah pole, the goddess of a fertility beside it. Wipe those two things out. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down. Offer the second bowl as a burnt offering. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. Now this is funny. You know Why? Because the sun's coming up, and they're going to know when they wake up that somebody did this. And they're going to find out really quickly who it was. So it's, it's kind of funny. It's okay to laugh that Gideon, because he was afraid of what everybody was going to think, he did this at night, thinking that it would somehow be in secret. This is outside, on the highest part of the area. Verse 28, in the morning, when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bowl sacrificed on the newly built altar. Who did this, they asked. And when they carefully investigated, it was, they quickly found out it was Gideon, son of Joash. So the men of town demanded Joash, bring out your son, he must die because he has broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. You can understand the panic that would set into town. Why? Because... The God of weather has been 
disgraced. And the goddess of fertility has been disgraced. Something has to be done to the, purpose, to the person that has done this. They have totally lost sight of the fact that it is the Lord God of Israel. It is their God who brings them fertility. It is their creator God who is in control of the weather. But out of panic, out of the desperation of needing good crops and lots of kids, the perpetrator needs to die. Joash replied to the hostile crowd, verse 31, Are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. If Baal really is a god, he can defend himself when somebody breaks down his altar. So that day they called Gideon Jerub Baal, saying, Let Baal contend with him, because he broke down Baal's altar. Now, all the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples joined forces and crossed over the Jordan and camped in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizarites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh, calling them to arms, and also into Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, so that they too went up to meet them. Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand. Now, he has already put out a fleece. He did this offering, and God made it very clear to Gideon that it was him talking. But here's Gideon again asking, making sure, making sure that this is God talking to him. Okay, God, I'm going to put out a fleece. When I wake up in the morning, if it's wet, but the ground is dry, I'm going to know it's you. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung, it, wrung out the dew. A bowl full of water came out of that fleece. Then Gideon said to God, don't be angry with me. Let me make just one more request. Allow me one more test with the fleece. This time, make the fleece dry and the ground covered with dew. And that night, God did so. Only the fleece was dry. All the ground was covered with dew. Now, here's what happens. They, the Israelite army numbers about 32,000. And that, that 32,000 knows that they're going up against somewhere in the realm of 135 to 140,000 soldiers. Camped out in this valley. What is that, about three to one, four to one? But the Lord says, you know what, Gideon, you've got too many. How would you like to hear that as a leader in that moment? <laughs> you've got too many men. So what I want you to do is I want you to, to make an announcement. Anybody that's afraid to go into battle can go home. Now, Okay, so he makes the announcement, and you've got to know that when Gideon makes that announcement, he's thinking, all right, a few hundred are going to go home. 22,000 men walked away. So now he's down to 10,000. Now where are we at? 130 to 1? Something like, I don't know, 13 to 1? That's what it is, 13 to 1. We've gone from 4 to 1 odds to 13 to 1 odds. And God says, oh, but you still have too many. So here's what I want you to do. Go to the river. And I'll give you instructions. At, tell the men to get a drink, and I'll give you instructions on what to do. <clears throat> the ones that bend over and are, and are lapping up the water like dogs, he said, sends them home. Now Gideon is, is down to 300 men versus about 135,000 or so. Do the odds. That's a lot. 400 to 1, something like that. And they go to battle. But here's what they do. They don't take swords. They don't take shields. They don't take weapons. They go and they surround the Midianite camp at night and they have trumpets. What a, what a, what a battle 
instrument. <laughs> they have trumpets, and they have empty pots, and then they put lamps inside the empty pots. And that's what they go to battle with. And at some point in the night, they blow the trumpets, they cry out, and they throw the pots down, and the pots go crashing down the hills. And the Midianites and the Malachites and these other eastern people wake up, they're, they're wo awoken in the middle of the night, and they start going crazy. And they hear all the sound, and they think there's this huge army coming out, and they start killing each other. And the Lord wins the battle that night by having them kill off each other. Israelites don't even go down until at the end, then they start pursuing what's left, and they overtake the Midianites. It's a crazy story. And Gideon leads them into this amazing victory. And they're so amazed by Gideon's victory but they, that they say, Gideon, be our leader. And Gideon, out of his spiritual awareness, his godliness, he says, no, the Lord will be your leader. Not me, not my son. But I'll tell you what you can do. Give me one of the earrings, all of you, from your plunder, as a, as a thank you gift. And they're like, sure. So they give him this big bag of treasure from the plunder, and he builds an idol. And his family starts worshiping that idol, and it says that it, that idol becomes a snare unto them. And you think, what? what? Really? And it's this pattern all the way through. You, th you would think that Gideon had figured out how to walk in the light. Jesus comes to him, a direct revelation, direct conversation with Gideon. You are a mighty warrior, and all you have to know is that I will be with you. Okay, can I make sure it's you? Little test. And then they, they get a little bit further into the story and says, can I make sure it's you once again? Lord, I'm going to put out a fleece. When I wake up in the morning, if the ground's dry and this is soaking wet, then I'll know it's you, and it's that way. Wait, I, need, I just need one more assurance. Let's do the opposite this night. And it was that way. You would think by then Gideon would have figured out how to walk in this circle that we talked about last week, walk in the light as he is in the light. You would, think, you would think by now he would have figured out how to know and encounter and embrace God's voice and God's calling, but no, obviously he didn't figure out too much. Just when you think he's got it, no, God's going to be your leader, but give me some gold, I'm going to make an idol. But when Gideon is, is having this God encounter, this Jesus encounter, I love the fact that he's hearing God's voice. He's hearing Jesus talk to him. He's experiencing dialogue with Jesus, and he enters into worship. His response is natural, and it's just as natural as ours is. He enters into worship. And then he walks in obedience. 